Have you ever seen a graph displaying results of a mathematical model and thought, how cool is that? And then started to wonder, what else could we model? Or quite opposite, you're still wondering, what is all this math we learn at school good for anyway? In both cases, this video is definitely for you. I'm a researcher at the University of Düsseldorf and together with my colleagues, we are granting you a sneak peek into the world of computational biology. It's not news to any of you that we are currently experiencing a pandemic. COVID-19 has been all over the place and we've seen models of the disease spread, the effect of social distancing, three-dimensional simulations of how far a cough can travel. We'd like to show you that these models are based on similar principles to the ones being used by us at QTB, including our work on plant science done within C+. For instance, one method both used in our institute and by epidemiologists studying the spread of coronavirus is differential equations. Differential equations is just a mathematical approach describing how a quantity change over time. SIR models are excellent example of simple yet informative models describing how a disease spread in the population. By dividing the population into three categories, those susceptible to the COVID-19, those infected, and those recovered. And by following the transition from one category to the next one, we are able to predict the number of infected cases at the given time point in the future. With such model, we can now change any given parameter and observe his impact in the population. Similarly to how one can predict the effect of a particular parameter on the dynamics of an infectious disease, we use theoretical tools to study how plants are affected by the environment. In that perspective, what can be more central to investigate than photosynthesis? From school, we remember that through photosynthesis, plants do not only assimilate energy for themselves to live and grow, but also produce oxygen that is vital to us. So, we built a differential equation model which associates good light conditions with high production of oxygen, leading to plant growth. On this graph, we see that initially, the more light is shown on a plant, the more oxygen is produced. But at a certain point, which is different for every plant, an increase of light doesn't lead to higher oxygen production. Then, we can say that the plant has reached its maximal photosynthetic productivity. The strength of our model is that we can additionally play other parameters, for instance, the duration of the lightning. This way, we can investigate which process would enable higher maximal photosynthetic productivity. Just as differential equations are used to compare evolution over time, models based on partial differential equations additionally consider variation in space. One aspect that all mathematical models share is that there are never ideal representations of the world, but rather simplifications that help us understand the important parts. Here, for example, you can see a spatial model of sugar transport in a plant leaf. Does the model look like a leaf? Does it incorporate all the processes that happen in a leaf? Most certainly not. It only incorporates a very simple representation of photosynthesis and the movement of sugar through the leaf. But is that bad? Again, no. Because what this model did was to allow us to predict the optimal placement of veins in the leaf, which was what we were interested in in the first place. So models do not need to be perfect representations of reality. They only really need to be useful ones. But Ivan, are mathematical models only useful for epidemiology and plant research? Well, the same as the sugar is pumped through the veins of the leaf, humans also need sugar to fuel organs and muscles. These sugar are stored in larger molecules called glycogen, and there are some diseases where either the storage is messed up or the routine. And with our model, we can help find ways to fix it. In this animated picture, you can see how the glucose molecules are stacked together to form glycogen. There are branches and chains. And this kind of 3D simulations allows us to investigate the structure, but also to mimic what happens in uh, glycogen-related diseases, 
and in the end to try to develop intervention strategies. Thanks for watching our video. We hope while you watch, you stay safe and healthy and you learned a little something new with our Planters Punch.